Welcome to today's tutorial. Uh, folks, today I'm going to share with you how I um, use Digital Photo Professional 4 in uh, conjunction with my Lightroom Classic. It's the workflow I use, especially following on from my previous video uh, on the um, conversion of a RAW file with Digital Photo Professional versus Lightroom. So um, let's have a start here. Uh, the first thing I always do is I set up my um, palette on the right hand side. We're all good to go. I'll start with lens correction. Um, you know, when we talk about digital lens optimizer, you know, we can uh, reset it and that's what the factory uh, setting is or this specific image and lens combination uh, the software has chosen. Uh, DLO in theory fixes problems caused by less than perfect optics and also the interaction with specific image sensors. So, um, you know, people will either go 10, 15% or they go full out uh, to 100%. I'm the latter. I always want to maximize the slider and make sure that I'm getting the best out of the situation. Uh, what I can also do is I always just take color blur, peripheral illumination and distortion. So um, the diffraction correction and chromatic aberration was done in camera so I can't adjust those. So if we have a look at distortion uh, you can have a look there. It does do a nice correction. Illumination, um, what that is doing is removing any vignette uh, you can have a look there. Some of the older lenses, you'll have a natural vignette. Uh, I like to remove it, and if I want to add a vignette, I do it in post-processing. And um, you know, that's about where I go with these sharp uh, these settings. The next slider I go to, or the next tool palette, will be the basic adjustment. Um, I always use Auto Light Optimizer. It balances my um, shadows and uh, information in the shadows. You can have a look there at the nice change, giving you a little bit more detail uh, through the image. And you can see the histogram is also moved slightly to the right. Um, good idea to shoot exposed to the right for me in wildlife photography. Clarity, I try and avoid using clarity as much as possible in this software. I haven't yet come to grips with it, but uh, clarity is the slider of the devil. Um, I was told many, many moons ago. The next I look at is a, a neutral picture style. Basically what I do there is I'll go to standard, and the only thing that actually changes is the sharpening. And you can have a look there, how it's um, changed the whole image overlay, making sure that the... Um, colors and brightness stand there. Let's go to neutral. You can have a look there. There's nothing on the um, on this little uh, gamma adjustment. Um, so when you go to standard, it changes the adjustment as well. So it's optimizing the information, but nothing changes down the bottom here. And then last but not least for me, um, I will go here and I will use the Canon noise reduction. And you know, I've been told that uh, there's lots of other software that has AI noise reduction and so on. Uh, it might be better, but um, for me, I like using DPP. It's also free, and I don't like complicating my workflow. I'm also a wildlife photographer, so if I have a bit of grain and a bit of contrast in my images, it doesn't really make too much of a difference in relative terms to my canvas printing. But uh, for books and stuff like that, obviously, we can take a bit more care. But the basics normally get me exactly where I need to be. And I leave the noise reduction on the auto function. And you can see there, um, we've got a pretty good uh, uh, noise reduction uh, on the image. Oh, I clicked too fast. Um, it takes a little while to render. Um, but uh, you must also remember, noise is not only from the sensor. You can get um, the environmental stuff when we look at this image. Uh, there it's nice and clean and smooth, but I'm shooting into the light. I'm shooting in a very dusty area in Mana Pools. I'm on foot, so you can see that not only the um, the noise from the sensor, but the external elements also play a role in hashtag noise. Uh, from here I go, and I will basically go, um, before I convert and save, I normally go and I edit. I... Um, Save recipe to file, and then basically um, I will create a, a recipe or a preset or something like that that I can just um, add to um, any image basically that this time of day I want to use. So I go and I change this to DPP Mana Pools Backlight. 
Um, I like to keep different recipes. Uh, makes my workflow easier. From there on, I will go to the convert and save. Basically, I will save it in the um, same uh, folder that uh, I have the um, original photo in. And we just go to my wildlife. Um, 2021, we go to uh, 27, and as you can have a look at my file number, it gives me the date, etc., that the um, image was taken. I will then just add DPP um, to the end of the file name so that uh, I have it. I I like to use um, smaller images for this type of stuff. It's not going to be for prints. So I'll save it as an 8-bit uh, TIFF, and then I just go save. And you'll see that um, the um, processing file, one of the downsides for me with DPPs, it just takes a little bit of time for the um, actual convert and save process to, to take place um, compared to any other export or saving for the, um, soft, uh, the images in other software. But at the end of the day, I've just found, as you'll see in my other video, that taking a little bit of time to do this type of stuff, you're going to maximize your um, file. And I think maximizing your output file is very, very important. So as you can see, we're moving along. There you have it. Um, ready to go. So the next step for me is um, I'll open Lightroom. I'll make sure that I'm in the same folder. I go to this folder and I go synchronize folder and there it shows you that there's a new folder, a new image to import. So I'll synchronize that uh, folder and there's the new file. You can have a look. It is a DPP and it's a TIFF file and we go import and voila there it is in Lightroom if we go back down to minor pools we can have a look um, here is the uh, raw file the file number is 31 and then there's the uh, DPP TIFF file so um, we have a look there's the difference already for me so that's basically what I would do to include um, DPP in my Lightroom workflow I'd love to hear your thoughts at the bottom if you have any questions also as always, I'd love you to share this with your friends and family on Facebook and uh, all your social media platforms. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and uh, I look forward to sharing the next tutorial with you. Have a great day, guys. Cheers.